everybody, welcome back to Weather for Weather Geeks Tuesday evening, the 9th day of August 2022. Today, as promised, was a different day. We had cooler temperatures, we had lower dew points, we had more clouds than sun, certainly. We even had a little rain for a time this morning and through the midday hours today. And uh, yeah, today really sticks out like a sore thumb when you look at the calendar view for August so far. So far in August, we've had three 90 degree days and a couple of near misses. We had an 89 on Monday and an 88 on Saturday. Uh, but today, easily the coolest day of August so far. But when you factor in highs and lows, of course, it's been way above average so far during the month. That number is going to change quite a bit, I think, in the coming couple of weeks with a pattern that will not feature uh, very much in the way of hot weather. So if you're not a fan of the heat and humidity, I think you're going to be a fan of the upcoming forecast as we transition into the middle of the month. We'll talk more about the longer range coming up in this video. In the meantime, uh, the storms last night into uh, today, the light rain that we had earlier today, made for kind of more of an even distribution of the rainfall totals with this particular event than some of our more recent events. Now, there was still variety. With overnight thunderstorms, we had about a half an inch down towards East Liverpool. We had about a half an inch with last evening storms around the 224 corridor, a relative minimum from around Hanoverton over towards East Palestine. That was kind of a ripoff zone a little bit through there. But then we did real well in some of the areas that have had hardly any rain so far in August prior to last evening. So Newton Falls, Cortland, over an inch in that corridor, Warren included. Uh, these are some areas that uh, have put up goose eggs uh, prior to last evening. And uh, so we made up for some lost ground or, or some lost time, I should say, uh, during uh, the storms that we had last evening. Boy, what a change, though. Uh, the dew point 10 degrees lower than the 7 o'clock hour last evening, making for a much more comfortable air mass and temperatures today we're mostly, again, in the 70s, which is uh, quite a uh, quite a departure from the upper 80s and lower 90s that we've had. Our old front is kind of stalled right around I-70, just off to our south, and the radar in southern Ohio and West Virginia kind of looks like northern Ohio's radar did last evening when the front was pushing into northern Ohio, but now it's settled to the south, getting some thunderstorms down towards Athens, Parkersburg, Marietta, over towards... Uh, Corksburg and Morgantown as well. That front will be on the weather map for another day tomorrow. We're close enough to it to have some clouds tonight, but far enough away that I think we are going to stay dry tonight into our Wednesday. Sky might even brighten for a time first thing in the morning in our northern viewing area, but I think overall in our viewing area, it's going to take until the afternoon before we see appreciable amounts of sunshine for our Wednesday. And then the second front arrives on Thursday. This has the true push of drier air and while there won't be much more than a sprinkle with us on Thursday behind this front I mean fantastic five-star weather coming our way Friday and Saturday hardly a cloud in the sky low dew points comfortable temperatures at night I mentioned this last evening on weather for weather geeks at night especially Friday night we might see some uh, backyard thermometers in some of the cooler nooks down to 46 47 degrees just chamber of commerce weather building in for a couple of days under this bubble of high pressure. So we have some great stuff to look forward to as we head towards Friday and Saturday. Now typically in August we see a fairly steep reduction in the amount of thunderstorms compared to earlier in the summer. In our uh, climate zone, thunderstorm activity tends to peak around here in June and July and then we start seeing things dropping off significantly by August and especially into September. Now we had some thunderstorms of course of late but I don't think there'll be much thunder and lightning coming our way over the next week. In fact, not much rain at all is coming our way over the next week. And we've made it through kind of the heart of our traditional severe weather season this year without any tornado warnings in our TV viewing area. We've had some to the west, in fact, quite a few out towards I-71. And we've had some to our south, closer to Interstate 70. We've had a few tornado warnings so far this year, east of I-79, out into west central parts of the Keystone State. But in our true TV viewing area, yeah, no tornado warnings thus far. Now, last year, you may remember, we had some uh, tornadic activity around the region in October. Let's hope we don't have a repeat of that this year. I mentioned, yeah, not much rain coming our way over the next week. The uh, GFS model is kind of an outlier right now. Most of our modeling suggests that a couple of showers at most through next Tuesday. We might have uh, a couple of rain chances early next week, but I don't think it will be a whole lot. Let's talk about uh, the longer range trends here because as uh, we've been talking about, uh, this pattern coming up uh, for the next couple of days, handful of days, is not that hot. What about the, the medium and longer range? This is today's run of what we call the CFS model, Climate Forecast System model. Uh, oranges and reds, of course, warmer than average temperatures. Blues are cooler than average. And uh, we're going to look at this you know, kind of in five-day chunks. And as we roll forward into mid-August, even late August, this modeling continues to suggest 
then it's the Pacific Northwest that will be baking in the heat into southwestern Canada as well. And around here, it's not advertising a whole lot of high heat at all um, through the end of the month. Now, of course, with any set of modeling, you take things with a big grain of salt once you get out far enough. But that's one set of modeling. Here's a look at the European uh, ensemble showing the uh, temperature departures from average as we roll forward into late this week, into the weekend, into next week. All the deep reds and browns, Seattle, Portland, Vancouver, places like that. Uh, you know, this just does not look like a very favorable, favorable pattern through at least the third week of August for any sort of high heat. Are we going to have some seasonably warm days? Sure. But will this be the kind of pattern that produces a lot of the lower 90s and dew points in the lower 70s like we've gotten used to of late? No, it doesn't look like it's, uh, it doesn't look that way, I should say. It's possible that we've kind of broken the back of summer a little bit with this pattern change this week. We always have some hot weather in September. Last year we had some very hot weather in late August into parts of early September. Um, and I, you know, it's too early to speculate too much on September as a whole, but it looks like it's possible that uh, now that we are done with the 70 degree dew points and the temperatures in the lower 90s for now, uh, we're gonna have a hard time getting them back anytime real soon. And of course, as we head deeper into August and into September, climatologically speaking, it's, it gets a little bit harder to have that, that kind of weather. It happens sometimes. We've had some pretty hot Septembers from time to time of late, but you know, long-term averages, yeah, it gets pretty hard to see that kind of heat and humidity the deeper into late summer and early fall that you do get. That's the way things stand right now. Some good news, if you again, if you're tired of uh, running the AC and you're tired of the heat and humidity, maybe not so good news if you have a pool and uh, you want to extend uh, pool season a little bit longer this year. Uh, we may be, uh, some, some places might be shutting down the pool a little bit early if uh, that mid to late August pattern continues into September. We'll have more updates, of course, on the real long range forecast, including September, in future editions of this video. In the meantime, thanks for watching tonight. I'll see you back here on Wednesday.